So, came across an interesting problem the other day on one of the units, and I'm going to try to draw this as best as I can. So, there's a cooling tower in the business unit in the plant, and you've got fin fans at the top. I'll draw really special fin fans. The noise in the background is my son playing Fortnite, and um, you have the output of this going out to the plant and your input coming in here so you've got your hot water and your cold cooling water going to the plant this is a sump normal level control and what they did is they put a TRC block here they want to control temperature so that's a TRC and then what they did is they put another PID block up here which controls the speed of the machine over here. So this is, let's call this, I think it, were, it was an SIC. And this went to there. And this went to the PLC. So this is its output, which becomes a set point to the SI the speed control and the output of this became the set point to the VFD. So in the DCS configuration on a Yokogawa system, we had a PID here, one PID, a second PID, um, input channel to the first PID, which was the temperature, input channel to the second PID, which is the feedback of the uh, rotation of the speed. So this is your PID your temperature controller and this is your PID which is your speed controller and it went something like this something like that and this is your, your input channel and there's your other input channel and there's your output analog channel so the first problem we had is they, the plant people said, well, this never worked. I could never tune this temperature loop. Now one has to look at this very carefully. If you think about if I was going to draw this particular section of the process, the water's coming in, it is not mixed. So you could almost visualize this as a plug flow reactor. Not quite. Well, that's a very nice drawing. So your temperature profile is, is going to change over the length. And this, this plug flow, if I change the speed, is not instantaneous. So what I did is I asked one of the young engineers to use DMC+. Plus. We took the output of this speed control and we took the PV of the temperature. And in DMC, if you plot it, it builds what they call a finite step response curve. Horizontal axis is time in minutes. And the vertical axis is response, in this time, a degree Celsius. And what we found is that for a 1% change, there was this dead time and then the rise time, which was quite quick. And it settled out and it was very clean uh, uh, models because the operators always ran this unit and manual so this was very very clean the new dmc uh, not punting any specific product but dmc plus is uh, dmc 3's model id engine is uh, extremely good it's got some pre-processing at which cleans up the dead time so i mean this dead time literally was perfect in the older versions of DMC plus you might have seen a lot of squiggles here and a lot of noise but this was clean but what was interesting this was about 12 minutes so if you've watched some of my other videos this doesn't work you cannot tune dead time very nicely so what I did is I took the output of this and I fed it into a delay block with 12 minutes and I fed it back into the feedback, uh, which I think is 
let's just remember it's VN or I think it's VN. It's your external reset feedback. So I artificially delayed this by um, 12 minutes. So this my, I made it a 12 minutes. I made it a, in the Yokogawa, you have a number of samples. I think I made it 60 samples and uh, uh, made it so that it was basically a 12 minute dead time. And it worked fine. It was working fine for a while up until later in the evening. And what we found was there were problems around this PID. Because what was happening is between about 40% and 70% or 40 and 50%, the speed of the machine didn't change. So it was this artificial dead band. So I'm going to give it some thoughts. So the best way to explain this, the way I explain this to the business unit is here you have a PID and let's draw the second PID. I'm just looking at the speed control. So this is the DCS speed control whose output gets sent to a PLC. This is your PLC speed control. That then goes out to the motor and there is some feedback which comes back into this controller as the PV. But at the same time, that same value gets sent over here as a PV. So the problem with this is that this has got a PID algorithm in it, and this has also got a PID algorithm. In. They've both got the same set points, and they're both trying to control the same PV. So it's, it's not going to work. So we need to get rid of this in a, in a way that it would keep the faceplate uh, looking the same for the panel operator. So we wanted a faceplate, which was basically it could have I wanted a faceplate that could have an auto mode, a manual mode, and a cascade mode, because this PID comes the temperature controller sets the set point of this. So we needed this functionality. And we basically needed it to behave like a manual loader. Uh, so I tried to brainstorm it a bit with a colleague of mine. And um, I left it to him, uh, Rosani, a young engineer. He took the Yokogawa help file and uh, spent an evening reading it. And he came back the next day with, with a very, very nice solution, which just goes to show you that if you read the help file and apply your mind, you can get some really neat things to work. So I'm going to take you to the implementation now so you can see it. But this is explaining the problem uh, so that you can understand why we wanted this manual loader effect. So on the Yoko, you have a manual loader, PVI, um, but it only has an auto. You have a manual loader, I think a SW, but that only has an auto and a manual mode. It doesn't have a CAS mode. The auto mode is in essence CAS. So it gets a bit confusing. So we just wanted to keep the same level or layer of abstraction visible to the panel operator. So this is the solution that my colleague came up with. His name is right there, Rudzani Zedzimani. And this is a simulation of the problem. So here's your TRC. This is your, your SIC, although it says MLDCAS. And this is the IO in the field. This is to simulate the IO. And what you'll see, what he's done is he's taken the PV going into the input connection and the same PV going into the VN connection. So this would normally be, the N would be from your IO channel and the VN is not something you would normally use. And the way he located that useful feature, and you'll see it says 4CK to minus 1, is via the help documents. So if you go to the help documents, I'll bring that across. And I'm not it, the VN is used for something called input compensation. It's a method where you can take the PV that's going into a PID block and artificially uh, fiddle with it. And the way he does it is, I'm going to try to see if I can. So eventually I found it under the, <laughs> under here. So this is the best drawing that you can get that explains it. And if I uh, put it alongside the, I'm going to just try to drag this across. So we can show it next to the control module. So remember what I said is he 
is basically put the PV onto the input. So there's your PV coming in. And then you put the same PV onto the VN connection. So you have a PV and a PV, and then he made this bias zero and the CK of minus one. So the PV that's going into the control module is always equal to zero. So what he's done is this particular blocks PV for the algorithm that's being used for its calculation will always be zero. And it's quite sneaky. So we open up the face plates of this so you can see there's different modes. And we go to the tuning. And there's the CK of minus one. It's quite important. Proportional band of 100. In other words, a gain of one in this particular case. You need to get the gain correct as well. Now to identify or understand what the PDMR block is, because we replaced the original PID block with a PDMR. Go through the document map. This is the quickest way, or well, the best way I know. Reference map, uh, function block details. Zoom out a little bit, Whoop, not too much. Uh, Kidokes, that's not going to work. Function block details. And you'll see PID or PDMR. It's got some rhubarb in there, but you're going to see there's that's. Uh, oh, let's just go down to where it does shows the calculation. So there, there is the the output. So the output is not a velocity type algorithm; it is an actual a calculation. And because we've scaled this correctly, because this gain is these two are basically equal to one always, and this PV or this error. Because we've artificially made this value here equal to zero always, the error will always be equal to the SV. Kind of sneaky. So that means the output of the calculation will always be the gain times the error. And because we've scaled it correctly, it should behave like a manual loader. The easiest way to show it is let's take this out of cascade and we put it into auto. So again, it's got an auto mode, and we can change the set point to 40. And if I open up the control module, the IO is being simulated. Now I could artificially put a bias in here, and you, it would you would see that there would be no effect on the. Uh, there's no way to do a bias on this, unfortunately. Could make the gain slightly less. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. So 10% error. But you're going to see that it'll be an offset the whole time. So even though there's an auto mode, it's not actually responding on the PV because we are internally making the PV. That's my little reminder that I'm supposed to take a break. I'm just going to quickly kill it. If I can locate the damn thing. Oh, there it's hiding. Um, that's my phone. Ah, lovely. And uh, so that's just for... It's just showing you that the PV is not really being used. And because of the gain and everything, the gain being one, um, this thing will always behave as required. So in other words, what I'm saying is just, let's put that back to where it was. Which was... Uh, Probably had it by open in the back. We make that gain of one. This is for IO simulation. So the manual loader, I can take the SV to 50. And you can see the SV and the MV move together perfectly because of the gain of this block. So all I'm showing is that you're using a PDMR block and jimmying its input to make it believe that the PV is always zero. So the error always follows the set point. And with a gain of one, with the correct scaling, it behaves like a manual loader. And you can see it behaving like a manual loader there. This PV is simulated, so there could be, an, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to try and track the set points. It's not, there's no, even though there's an integral value here, that's for used for something else in the PDMR block. It's important to read the PDMR block. So all I'm showing is a sneaky way to do a manual loader where there is a PV, there are three modes, auto, manual, and cascade, where auto really um, is basically manual. 
uh, where the SV and the MV move together. So that resolved our problem for that layer of abstraction. Didn't realize how nasally I sounded in these videos, but anyway, and how well this microphone picks up my breathing. I just want to show you guys uh, where the settings are to actually set the compensation. And I think I have it open already, so I'm just going to close it and walk you through the steps. So, right click, edit detail. Uh, sometime today. So you'll find normally it just shows this particular basic panel. You go advanced. And the control calculation, this is by normal. Normally it's selected as no, but we're going to do input compensation. And the other thing you want to do is make sure you have set point PV tracking. And that's where it's hiding. Not obvious, but there it is. Just in case that question is on your mind. Alright, feel free to email me if you have any questions.